Well, it took about 50,000 miles, but one of the common jail issues eventually reared its ugly head. A broken visor. So what are we gonna to do to fix it? Well, let me show you, there's a few options. The first one involves the use of a spring clip retainer and using a rotary tool to create a groove around the metal shaft. They did have to trim some plastic back uh, where it broke. That's part of the issue is there's a, a retaining edge that they have to cut back and they grind a groove in the top and they put that spring clip over the top of it. They do have to remove the wires from the connector and then carefully push the pins back in place without damaging anything. Um, to get around that, another individual, or many, came up with uh, using a split shaft collar where you can open it up and then you put the two halves together again using two Allen bolts. Um, I think the size of the shaft is eight millimeters and one I found on YouTube, he found a shaft collar that was 18 millimeters around and eight millimeters inner diameter. So uh, it looked like it worked good. Uh, there were a couple of individuals that used a metal, metal collar and they had to go back and put some electrical tape on it. Apparently something was grounding out and uh, it was actually their driver's visor that was having some electrical issues. But uh, that's something to keep in mind. What am I gonna do? Well, I decided to go a different route. Part of it's curiosity. Um, I'm going to replace the factory visor and then I'm gonna use a product by a gun parts supplier named TACCOM. And these pieces that they create reinforce that area. Um, and if there was a failure of that piece of plastic, that edge that keeps it up in there, then it would just fall and be caught by the TACCOM piece. I'm also hoping that this product gives additional support to where the shaft goes up into the windshield frame and just keeps it from wiggling around so much and breaking that ring that you'll probably find up in there when you start removing the plastic panels. So what tools are you gonna to need to remove and reinstall the visor in addition to the TACCOM pieces? Well, I'll show you. Don't laugh at my repurposed lunchbox. It fits my Black & Decker drill perfectly. Uh, you're gonna need a P2 Phillips bit and a T20 bit, or you can also use a T20 screwdriver like I have here. You're going to need to remove the freedom panel on this side in order to gain access to two screws that are on the top of this roll bar. First you remove the driver's side freedom panel and then you remove the passenger side. Then you're gonna to need to remove two screws here. Keep track of them, don't lose them. And then two screws up top here. Then you're gonna to need to remove this trim piece off the roll bar right here. So just be gentle with it. All right. And then come on, get up top here, see what's going on. Uh, there's a, a guide pin there. You don't wanna break that off. So tilt it away. And then, ooh. Right there. That might give you a little bit of a fit and see how it's curved right there. So just keep that in mind. And uh, also these little guide pins right here. You don't want to break those. Next up, we're going to remove this piece right here. Make sure you get it in there right. There is blue thread locker on there. So keep that in mind. Maybe you might want to add just a drop or so more when you replace them. 
if you were just adding the tack com pieces from looking at their instructions you wouldn't remove both screws by the way you would just remove one at a time it's even easier uh, if you're looking to just prevent it hopefully hopefully prevent it from uh, breaking up here um, let me see if I can show you what the issue is see where the exposed chrome shaft is there's normally a piece that comes up and out it's my understanding around here to where um, I guess it just goes up and snaps in uh, what you are doing by adding the tack com piece you see this edge here when that's up in there tack com piece bridges this gap right here and grips it tightly around this smaller diameter section of the visor arm there um, so if it did let loose then obviously it was not, well, obviously wouldn't drop that far but it would catch it right there on that edge all right what are we looking for we're looking for this connector right here you can uh see that there's another guide pin right here so you're going to be looking for a hole apparently that one right there when you go to reinstall the new one the next step is to disconnect the visor's wiring harness so what you'll do is you'll take your thumb here push down on this tab and pull then you'll need to remove the wiring harness from the roll bar here it's just a push pin easier said than done so i'm going to get some uh, interior trim removal tools to help me with this so i got my trim removal tools i've got two options here to see which one works the best all right, so I'm gonna try this one first. Get up under there. Yeah, I've got a little bit of that upper trim piece there. Don't wanna mess that up. Let's try turning around. A little stubborn there but I got it all right so the new visor is on the right you can see what it's supposed to look like at the top and you can see what happened here let's see this ring that's just a clean break right there and you can see how you can see the chrome right there that's where it broke. So here's the new piece. This cost me $20 plus about $12 in shipping. So I figured it was a low enough price to give it a shot and see what happens. Hopefully the TACCOM pieces make it last a lot longer. I guess we're going to find out. Now that we know that the original screws line up with the original holes in the windshield frame. Let's go ahead and install the TACCOM pieces. Uh, TACCOM says do one side at a time. It'll keep the visor from falling. And the new screws are longer to go both through the plastic and into the original materials. It's also countersunk, which is a later feature in the kits, allowing the head of the screw to be below the surface of the piece there. All right, so what I did was I removed one of the T20 screws and I installed this one. And it's not torqued all the way, but it's pretty close. And then I went over to the other side removed that t20 screw and you can see I have that one started uh, you 
you can see there is some interference there. So I'll need to grind down this side. You shouldn't have to do it. The manufacturer should do that, but it's not a big deal. All right, so when this piece is installed, it's installed this way, the opening towards the front of the vehicle. So when you look up at the visor, this is the hole that's going to interfere with the plastic on the visor. You're going to need to sand this down. Let's put a nice 45 degree on the outer edge. I'll show you when I'm done. All right, so here's where we're at. Put a nice little bevel on there. I used some scrap 150 grit I had laying around and a little finishing tool. I think it's got 600 grit on it just to kind of clean it up a little bit. I'll probably hit it a little bit more before I install it, but you get the general idea. Just put a bevel on it just like that and it will clear the visor. There is one version uh, that only secures on one side. So just imagine a hook shape there instead of having the side that has the bevel to it. That version is, is about $20. Uh, what I bought was 30. Just hoping it would give it a little bit more rigidity up there and help the visor to not break. Okay, so I'm gonna move forward with the install of these TACCOM clips. The opening is going to face the front of the Jeep and the beveled edge here is gonna face the middle. Like this. All right, so I've already got the screw out on the left side, so I just need to install that screw, and then I'll work on removing the T20 out of the right side and reinstall the Phillips head screw that's supplied with the kit. I've got my drill set on a torque setting of two. And we're done with the driver's side. Now I'll do the same on the passenger side. All right, so I'm gonna leave this a little loose on this side so I can move the clip around as needed. Okay, so now we're gonna move the clip over the hole on the inboard side and install our Phillips head screw. All right, so that started. And the outboard side, we're gonna go ahead and snug that up. Everything's fully installed and hopefully good to go. Lastly, reinstall your plastic trim piece. Remember, there's two screws on the bottom and two on the top. After that, just reinstall your freedom panels and you're done. It might take you a little bit of finagling to get this thing back on, but remember to line up this pin. Line up this tab with that slot. Line up this pin. this curved piece up inside there. Make sure none of the plastic is catching on these as you try to push it on. See there's a little bit of a, an edge here to catch on. And one thing you might overlook here is over in this area. Might catch there a little bit. Anyway, install the four screws and you're golden.